Welcome to Space News from the Electric Universe, brought to you by the Thunderbolts Project at thunderbolts.info. 2018 has witnessed the deepening of yet another ongoing mystery in the world of astronomy. Last year, we reported on the discovery of the first asteroid which is believed to have originated from outside our solar system. The possible interstellar traveler, called Oumuamua, has challenged astronomers to explain its origins and nature. Debates have raged over whether the object is actually an asteroid or a comet. And more recently, based on its anomalous acceleration as it moved away from the Sun, some scientists have even proposed that it may be a kind of alien technology. In part one of this three-part investigation, physicist Eugene Bagashoff begins his analysis of this intriguing and perhaps very significant celestial object. More than a year ago, in October of 2017, astronomers have detected a pretty peculiar object that was later named Oumuamua. There are two Space News episodes available at the Thunderbolts Project YouTube channel that describe the initial findings, which I would not repeat in detail for the sake of brevity, but which I recommend to address to anyone interested in having more details on the topic. I would only mention that Oumuamua is supposed to be the first interstellar object that was ever directly observed. It was detected already after its assumed perihelion, which, according to the astronomers' calculations, should have happened on September 9, 2017. Since the initial detection, there has been a series of observations made by different groups around the world to gather more data to work with. However, the object was so small and was moving away from the Sun so fast that already in January of 2018, the observation ceased, as nothing could be detected ever since, even by the most powerful telescopes. In fact, some of them, for example the Spitzer Space Telescope, could not detect the object already in November of 2017, as is stated in the recent paper called Spitzer Observations of Interstellar Object Oumuamua. As far as I know, the last telescope that could still see Oumuamua in early January was Hubble Space Telescope, but eventually it lost sight of it too. After all the available measurements were analyzed, an important paper was released in June of 2018. It was quite straightforwardly named Non-Gravitational Acceleration in the Trajectory of Oumuamua. This paper states that more than 400 separate observations of Oumuamua, performed at different facilities, show that there is something wrong with the way it was moving while it was still observable. In particular, its path in the sky, I quote, cannot be fitted in its entirety by a trajectory governed solely by gravitational forces due to the Sun, the eight planets, the Moon, Pluto, the 16 largest bodies in the asteroid main belt, and relativistic effects, end of quote. See also the recent NASA APOD video that highlights the deviation of Oumuamua from the initially predicted trajectory. The authors of the paper have tried to fit the deviations with a simple empirical formula, and it seems that Oumuamua's trajectory might be more or less nicely described if there is a small acceleration of the order of 10 to the minus 6th meters per second squared directed radially outwards from the Sun. Such acceleration means that when it was passing near the Earth, for example, it was gaining roughly 40 centimeters per second of speed each day. This is a pretty small acceleration, yet easily noticeable in the long run. This acceleration also seems to have a dependence on the distance to the Sun in the form of 1 over r or 1 over r squared, and at the given uncertainties in observations, it is impossible to rule either of these out. So at the moment, it seems that the Sun actually repels Oumuamua with a certain radially dependent force. As to the nature of this force, the authors consider, I quote, outgassing to be the most physically plausible explanation, although with some caveats, end of quote. They also consider other possible options, such as solar radiation pressure, the Yarkovsky effect, friction-like effects, an impulsive change in velocity, a binary or fragmented object, a photocenter offset, or magnetization. To imply solar radiation pressure as the main cause of the acceleration seems reasonable, as it also demonstrates the 1 over r squared dependence. Yet the authors note that in order to get the necessary acceleration, the density of Oumuamua should be three or four orders of magnitude smaller than the density of small bodies in the solar system. So it literally should be as light as air on Earth, or even a few times lighter. 
We shall come back to this point a bit later regarding other recent paper, but let us finish with this one first. The other alternative considered by the authors is the Yurkovsky effect, which is a slight acceleration that the small body gains as it is heated up by the sun and emits thermal radiation of its own outwards. Yet in this case, the acceleration is also orders of magnitude smaller than the observed one, and its direction is also inconsistent with the observations. Friction or drag-like phenomena, according to the authors, should lead to the emergence of forces that are directed along the direction of motion and not radially to or from the sun, so they also rule out these. Impulsive change in trajectory, which might have been expected, for example, in the case of a single sudden cometary outburst or a collision with the other body, is also ruled out because the additional acceleration is observed even at the separated parts of the trajectory, which would be impossible if only one of them contained the impulsive event. It is also possible that Oumuamua broke down into parts and we are only observing a fraction of it, so that although the center of mass still moves along the correct trajectory, the part that we are able to observe no longer does. Yet the authors note that it was technically possible to detect pieces up to 100 times smaller than the initial object, yet we haven't seen any such objects around it. And any pieces smaller than that would simply lack the mass necessary to alter the trajectory of the observed part in any significant way. It might also be the case that the optical photocenter of Oumuamua, its brightest part basically, the position of which is measured by the telescopes, is displaced with respect to the center of mass. In this case again, the observed motion might not exactly correspond to the real motion of the center of mass. But researchers note that with the resolution that was obtained during the observations, even if one places the photocenter at the very edge of the object, the separation from the center of mass would still be too small to account for the observed discrepancies. Finally, the authors considered the possible magnetization of Oumuamua and solar wind pressure as a possible reason of the supposedly observed acceleration. Yet they report that the modeling of solar wind plasma speed and density would imply only about 10 to the minus 11th meters per second squared of acceleration, which is five orders of magnitude smaller than the acceleration assumed from the observations. So they conclude that in their opinion an outgassing processes providing a sort of reactive jet is what is causing the acceleration of Oumuamua. Thus, the paper has effectively reopened the discussion about whether to consider Oumuamua an asteroid or a comet after all. Yet a few months later, another paper appeared that was criticizing the conclusions given above. The author of this paper indicates that the outgassing scenario is pretty unlikely as, first of all, no coma of volatiles or dust was ever observed around Oumuamua, despite the pretty intense observational campaign, and secondly, he indicates that such noticeable outgassing that would be required for the observed acceleration would also most likely cause disturbances in the rotation of Oumuamua, even more so that its shape was initially assumed to be very odd, highly elongated in particular. Yet the rotation derived from observation seems pretty regular. Yes, it is quite complex, and Oumuamua seem not only to rotate, but also tumble, and in general seem to demonstrate at least two distinct modes of rotation, as another paper indicates. So the regularity with which this complex rotation is observed only reinforces the idea that no outgassing took place from the surface. I should mention another recent paper that caused quite a bit of a fuss in the media. It is called, Could Solar Radiation Pressure Explain Oumuamua's Peculiar Acceleration? This paper states that the hypothesized 1 over r squared acceleration outwards from the sun that was reported previously could be explained if the cause of the acceleration was exactly the solar radiation pressure itself, not the heating of the object followed by the formation of jets of sublimating material. Of course, as we've already discussed, this option wasn't neglected by the previous considerations, yet the authors of this one, in order for such a scenario to work, assume a much smaller overall density of the object. They're effectively saying that Oumuamua could be a kind of a solar sail, a big but incredibly thin or otherwise light object that is able to be propelled to at least some extent by the electromagnetic radiation from the sun and or other stars. To have an idea how light it should be, its mass to area ratio should only be about 0.1 grams per square centimeter. 
So if it is made of solid material with roughly the same densities we encounter on Earth, it should be less than one millimeter thick all across its surface. As to geometry of Oumuamua, the authors suppose that it might not necessarily be a plane or flat sheet, but that it might be, for example, a hollow cone or an ellipsoid, etc. The authors humbly note that such a peculiar object might have been produced naturally through some unknown process, yet anyway they're mostly focusing their discussion on the possibility that it might be artificial, either an operational spacecraft or a piece of space debris, a remnant of some hardware previously utilized by an alien civilization. It seems that the alien hypothesis at least doesn't contradict the observations. We have been unable to adequately measure the size of the object, so it might have a higher reflectivity than was initially supposed, and at the same time be smaller in size. That possibility fits the solar sail scenario, which would imply a higher reflectivity for maximum efficiency. Also, smaller size, higher albedo, and thus lower temperature would fit pretty nicely with the lack of detection by Spitzer telescope, as it works in the infrared range. The peculiar tumbling and overall irregular rotation of Oumuamua might be explained if one assumes that this object is not a functioning spacecraft, but rather a piece of space debris, since if it was a working solar sail, it would be reasonable to somehow control its attitude and thus constantly receive an acceleration in the needed direction, rather than to reflect solar light here and there with a period of 8 hours, wasting the potential velocity increase. It is also notable that Project SETI has conducted a series of observations of the object, specifically to look for possible radio transmissions, yet failed to detect any such signals. So I would say that if it is indeed an alien spacecraft, it is probably not functioning anymore, or perhaps was initially designed in such a way as to autonomously float in space without further possibility to correct its course. Naturally, one could always say that the aliens deliberately shut all the systems down and let their probe tumble so that we would not be able to figure the situation out. Well, by following this line of reasoning, I think one could explain literally any possible behavior of this body, and thus it is not viable to pursue altogether. I feel that it is more productive to constrain the hypotheses with a very economical involvement of the unknowns. And for that very reason, I also tend to look for other explanations at this point, not involving alien civilizations. As a curious detail, I should add that one of the arguments proposed in favor of the alien solar sail hypothesis is that Oumuamua came to the solar system at a relatively low speed with respect to the so-called local standard of rest, or LSR, which is the reference frame that travels around the center of the galaxy with approximately the same speed as the sun and nearby stars, and thus is convenient to be used as a point of origin in tracking more subtle motions in our neighborhood such as the motion of the Sun itself towards the solar apex, which was exactly the direction from which Oumuamua came. The Sun basically rammed into it, which I've described in the very first video on the topic. So the idea proposed in the last mentioned paper was that perhaps aliens used that to camouflage their probe, hide its initial point of departure, etc., since the LSR is a sort of a neutral ground, not really connected to any particular star. Well, in this case, the question arises, why would someone use a solar sail for that? To achieve minimal velocity with respect to the LSR, the probe should have had to leave its parent system and then utilize some amazingly clever maneuvers around multiple other stars, especially if it was powered strictly by the stellar light emissions. And it would probably take a huge amount of time, like millions or even hundreds of millions of years, and the result is not quite guaranteed. Solar sail is really not a very useful technology for any complex maneuvering. Anyway, here I only wish to add that to me as a scientist, it is always more exciting to find new effects and properties of nature itself, rather than to explain anything unknown or unexpected by a deus ex machina of alien technology. So in the next two videos, I would propose a few hypotheses and alternative scenarios that might provide another perspective on the subject in the electric universe paradigm and in light of various related theories and concepts.